What a beautiful day, everyone. The sun is shining. I hope we all get to enjoy the beautiful sunshine today. Um, yeah, good to see you all here. I'd like to read something I've um, come across. And it's specifically to, in regards to blessing the name of the Lord, which is the first song we're going to sing this morning in worship. Um, here we go. I'm not going to read the whole article. What does it mean exactly to bless or for the name of the Lord to be blessed or to bless the name of the Lord? Um, we have several versions in the Bible, uh, versions of the Bible, which translate blessed to praise or to kneel or to admonish. Um, some people say it's easier to worship God in times of plenty, harder to worship God in times of want. Not always, I say. There are those who, when God is in heaven and all is right with the world, skip about the path of life, forgetting to say thank you. These are the ones who, when dark clouds gather, they run to God and fall face down. In the story of Job, which you may be familiar with, um, and the song that we're about to sing, is that we're about to praise him and to kneel before him in adoration and trust, no matter the season or circumstances of life. So where do you fit into the equation this morning? Where are you at today? In plenty, or when the entire world has fallen around you, do you kneel before God and praise? First Thessalonians 1.18 says, Give thanks to God in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What circumstances are you experiencing right now? It's good to acknowledge where we are right now, because God's not about us being... Uh, facades and you know and being fake and not being real are you in a time of provision are you in a, in a time of losing it all are you in a in a are you living between a rock and a hard place or are you living on the rock in a hard place <laughs> where are you right now will you kneel and sing blessed be the name of the lord i challenge you that as you sing this this hymn this modern hymn you call to mind all that you're going through and that you choose to bless God anyway. Then watch according to the meaning of the Hebrew word that God blesses you too. So let's stand and sing, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glorious name blessed be your name when the sun shines Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. 
on the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Yes, blessed Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your In the lowest valley, I will bless your name. I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. All my days, yes, I will. Let's sing, yes, I will.
Praising God who has saved us. There may be maybe those this morning that have never heard about the God that we're blessing the name of. Not knowing how to get to know or understand this God. Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever should believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So this is a God that offers salvation for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. But whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. this God of salvation and you have this salvation thank him thank him for the salvation that he has brought through Jesus the son of God who came to give his life that we may have life if you do not know this salvation I pray this morning your encounter encounter God and Jesus, his son who came to give us salvation. I'm going to sing, sing about God being mighty to save. Jesus 
on Jesus who we are to look to for all things he who was before there was light walked across the pages of time he who made every living thing behold him 
He who heard humanity's cry left his throne to wake as a child. He became like the least of us. Behold him. Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the roaring lion. There's no real words to describe how how wonderful Jesus is. And we just try and find words. But I just pray this morning as we sing this last song, you really focus in on who it is we believe in, who it is we praise and we believe we'll be with for eternity. And what it means today for those around you, your friends and family, for the world that we live in and the world that is eventually going to pass, what really matters.
Hello. Morning, everyone. We like to think of the Lord. We like to think of the Lord and His death on the cross. But first, I want to read a psalm. A psalm that's meant a lot for me lately. In fact, I've got it, I've got it on. Thank you. I have it um, in the music. And it's really fantastic. And that's Psalm 91. So I'm just going to read out Psalm 91. And then you want to think about its relationship with the cross. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, And 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. How's that for a list of promises? Um, I was thinking about those and thinking that really we can't enter into any of those promises without the cross. Because um, at the cross in Colossians, uh, Colossians 13... Sorry, Colossians 3, verse 15. We read where Jesus um, disarmed principalities and powers and made a show show of them, a spectacle of them, triumphing over them in the cross. It's my writing. (laughs) Um, At the cross, Jesus triumphed over the enemy. He triumphed over the enemy And there's things in this psalm that we can see where the triumph is worked out in our lives. Because of the cross, our sins are forgiven. Because of the cross, we are declared righteous with Jesus' blood. Because of the cross, we enjoy God's promises and his care for us. Because of the cross, we can live in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. Because of the cross, we can relax under the shadow of the Almighty. Because of the cross, we can wholeheartedly trust in Jesus. Because of the cross, God promises no plague shall come near our house. He declares that his angels are instructed to look after us and keep us safe. 
Because of the cross, Jesus listens when we pray. His ears are always open to our prayers. And because of the cross, he promises us long life and salvation. And I believe this morning our heart should be full of thanks for Jesus and the cross, for what he suffered for us. And he suffered there on the cross in our place. What a thing to do for someone else. Such love when you take the punishment for someone else's sin. So let's take the elements this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your flesh. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you suffered in your flesh, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the stripes you bore on your back, Lord. We thought, thank you, Lord, that those stripes declare we are healed, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we weren't going to be healed. We were healed, Lord. We thank you that it's done, Lord. We thank you that all you want us to do now is to receive it. So, Lord, we thank you for your flesh this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. We thank you that it has great power. We thank you that your blood triumphed over the enemy because when you shed your blood, Lord, you brought, up, brought us out to have the righteousness of God. We thank you, Lord, for that, um, that exchange, Lord, that instead of being sinners, we are righteous in your sight because of what you have done and because of your shed blood. We thank you and are very grateful for your blood this morning. Amen. Thank you. Otherwise they can't hear me. Yes, especially if I'm going online and all around the world. It's like, yay! How is everyone today? Breathing. Breathing? Excellent. That is a good sign. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. People know that saying. Rodney Howard Brown, eat your heart out. <laughs> I'd uh, just like to let you know, I'll stop walking around because the camera's trying to chase me. <laughs> um, there is no groups at the minute because we're on our Christmas break. That will, they will be coming back very soon. Um, there is a bit of sickness going around at the minute, so it's advisable to wear a mask, but if you don't want to, that's entirely up to you. We're not saying that you have to. Our leaders are still on call, so if you need some need leadership in any way, if you need our senior pastor or our other leadership, just give us a call. If you don't have their numbers, we can give you their numbers. That's not a problem. Um, we, we're all here to help, okay? Um, just because Anne's just sat down, I would like to call her up again. <laughs> Because she does such a wonderful job. Yay. Here's Anne. Hello. <laughs> um, well, I take the uh, art for an art group, Art Connect, and I'd like to recommend it, of course I would, because um, we just have a lovely time and it's great fellowship. And even if you're no good at art or think you're no good, I believe everybody can do something, um, you can enjoy the fellowship. And uh, next term starts on February the 8th, and I've brought a list of the meetings with me, if you want to have a sheet. And uh, this term we're going to think about uh, unfinished projects that you might have you want to finish off. But I'd like to also um, take a look at using gouache paint, which is like poster paint, which is quite different to watercolour, and it's quite a different technique. So if you're interested in learning that and coming along and having some fun and a cup of tea, you're very welcome. Woohoo! Anne is the art lady. She does a great job. 
have a look at my list of things. Okay, so now we're going to take up the offerings. Um, so as the ushers go around with the bags. We can also do our offerings online these days. Um, so you'll see all of our online people, you'll see the, the thing on the board. Um, if you are going to do put an offering in for missions, please use that missions bank account and actually type missions in the description. Otherwise, when our office staff go to do it all, they will just stick it in the normal offering because it hasn't been tagged as missions, okay? So we have a very live and vibrant missions team and we do a lot of work over in South Sudan and over all over the place and, we're, and they're reaching out into local missions as well. So they, they've got a really strong team. So, when Jason gets himself all sorted out, we will cross over to Beck. If you turn the computer audio up to Jace, that would be good. Um, we're just waiting for Beck to show up because Beck is streaming in today. I've done a lot of work with Beck. Um, she's a great friend of mine. We've been through Bible college together. And I can see you. I don't know whether we can hear you yet. Can you hear me, Beck? No? Yes? Kind of? Sort of? Uh, just a normal um, she's a great friend of mine. Normal computer channel. Bible college together. Okay, so um, we've got a massive delay. <laughs> I can see you. I don't know whether we can hear you yet. Can you hear me, Beck? I can hear you, Shane, from the live stream. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can Hi. now. Yeah. Can you hear me? We have a massive delay. <laughs> All right. I know there's about 10 seconds. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start preaching my end and turn the live stream off because it is super super confusing now good morning everybody i so wish i could be there with you i can see you walking past the cameras and i'm like hi guys hi i wish i was there but my family is in isolation for the week joe has the covid and um we are doing what we need to do to keep everybody else protected and he's fine just so you know he's fine and um it was felt a little bit sick during the week but he's okay and we're just making sure that the rest of us are good and not spreading anything around so I'm still excited to come and talk to you today via technology. If you're online, you are unfortunately not going to see my animated face because you're just going to get a picture because we could only get the sound to you. But I want you to pretend you're listening to a podcast and stick with us anyway. And I will explain any visual thing that you might need to know because I do actually have a couple of props today. So Lance, so good. So good, Lance, on his own, up the front, doing his thing. So brave, so bold, and what an excellent word for us. Oh, my gosh, I can still do my phone. I've got to turn that thing down. Okay, I think we'll be okay now. All right, so I, um, I'm really excited to bring your word today, and it was a bit of a weird one because it's one of those words that when God speaks about it, he speaks something different than maybe what you might have heard in Christian circles about it. And the word was prosper. So I um, God had been speaking to me about, about speaking about new life and what it is to be a new creation at the beginning of the year to be reminded of that, but also what it is to be prosperous and bringing those two things together. So being a bit of a life student that I am, I wanted to see what God had to say about it and not just what other preachers had to say about it. So I went to the Bible and God gave me um, a scripture in Joshua, which I am going to read to you now. This is from Joshua 1.8 and today I am going to be reading from the New King James Version and just because that was the one that I was looking at at the time, they all say something similar, so there's no big deal about that. And it says, Joshua 1.8, This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, 
but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Okay, so prosperity is something that God talks about. It's not just give us your money and God will bless you. That is not what this message is about. So you can just put that idea right away, calm yourself down. We do not preach that at this church. So um, God wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to have success. He wants us to make our way towards that. Now, one of the first things I do when, um, if God gives me a specific word, is I crack out the concordance and I have a look at what does that word mean in Hebrew and also in Greek because we've got, well, we've actually got three languages in the Bible, which is Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, but there's not a lot written in Aramaic and this would have been written in, um, in Hebrew. I won't pretend I can pronounce the word. I had to try. It didn't work out for me. I wouldn't put you through it. So, but interestingly, prosperity means to move forward or to make pros- progress. It's, it's not about a state so much as it is about a movement, a moving forward. And what about this? To come through mightily. To come through mightily. I love that. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, for those of you online, my eyes just bugged out of my head because I was really excited. All right, Greek, and it means to help on the road or to succeed in reaching. So there's something that we're heading towards. There's something that God wants us to obtain, and there's a movement in this prosperity. It's not just a state of being stagnant and being still because we know even though God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, he's not a stagnant God. He's always moving. He's always doing something, and it's not always in the same way. Do you think Moses had seen the Red Seas part before the Red Seas parted? No. God does new things. Okay. So there's this sense of wholeness as well in the world. Word. There's this, it's, it's similar in a sense to the word shalom, which gives you a sense of all over well-being in, in your um, physical health, your mental health, your spiritual health, your community, all of those different things. There's this wholeness in this prosperity that God would have you um, seek and live in. Now, in 3 John 1, 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I pray that you may prosper in all things. So not just in being at church on Sunday, but maybe getting up and going for a walk in the morning, whatever it is. I mean, I pray that you may prosper in all things. In all things, God wants us to be moving forward mightily. How cool is that? Yes, you can say amen because I'm not even going to know, but, I mean, I'm hearing it in my mind's eye. All right. Okay. How do we do it, Lord? How do we do it? Well, in Matthew 5, 17, it says that, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, keep the law that we may. Oh, my gosh. You know what? When you just get lost online, the whole world's going to see you be a failure. It's okay. God still loves me. All right. So, bless it. I pray that you may prosper in all things. And how do we keep the law? Well, it says Jesus came to fulfill the law in Matthew. And in Romans 10, 9, it says, For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness is for everybody who believes. So we don't need to worry about fulfilling the A, B, C, D of what to do of ceremonial things because now we have the law of righteousness which is fulfilled in Christ. All right, but God told me to check out Joshua. So I am going to speak a little bit about Joshua, but first I'd like to read you something from Psalms, which is so, so beautiful. And again, it is about the prosperity that God wants for us and how it is found in staying in the law. This is Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. 
His delight is in the law of the Lord. Is your delight in Jesus? If your delight is in Jesus and his righteousness, that's where your prosperity is going to come from. Do you meditate on him day and night? Are you not just in a relationship as a son or a daughter, but are you in fellowship with Jesus? Who is your righteousness? Who is your key to prosperity? So there's the other side to prosperity, which is not prospering. And as you may imagine, Proverbs 25, 13 tells us that he who cover his, covers his sin won't be prosperous. If you are hiding the fact that you are faulty, doing the wrong thing, it, those people will not prosper because you need to be in the righteousness of Christ to prosper. And when you're in that righteousness of Christ and you have that life, that's not your intention for yourself. Okay, transgressors do not prosper. Transgressing is moving away from God. That won't prosper you. And as we know, well, maybe you don't, so I'm going to tell you, Israel never did really well when it wasn't listening to God. When it came to wars and things, all of a sudden, something that they might want to uh, or expect to win, they wouldn't win if they weren't in the will of the Lord and they weren't listening and seeking him for their vision and their prosperity, but if they were thinking about doing it in their own strength and their own plans. So now to Joshua. Joshua is a type of Christ. So that what that means is that he was an embodiment or a shadow of what Christ was going to be for telling us something about Christ. So there's lots of similarities between Joshua and Christ, parallels that we can draw, which shows us the thread of Christ running through the Bible and God's intention from the very beginning. As we like to say in Australia, it's the vibe of the thing. The Bible has the vibe of the thing all the way through the vibe of the thing. Okay, crossing the Jordan River was the scripture that God led me to. Now, I don't know, some of you might have been there and might have seen it in person. I'm not very geographical. I'm, my husband is an interstate truck driver and sometimes he'll ask me where something is because he's not an Australian national. And um, I'll say, I don't know. And he'll say, how do you not know? You live there. And I'm like, well, I haven't been there. I don't know where it is. I'm, I'm not curious like that. If I go somewhere, maybe I'll see it. But, you know, I am completely unfamiliar with anything about the Jordan River except the stories. So it is actually about 250 k's. They're about long. And what it looks like today is quite different to how it looked in the past because there's been lots of damming off it because it was quite a vibrant and, and deep um, river. So there's been heaps of damming. So now it does not look like what it did. So if you've seen it, geographically, it's not exactly the same. So a very large river running a massive amount of time, but also quite wide, about three kilometres wide and also very deep. Now, at the time of the crossing, it was the peak flow and the tides were at their highest. The water was rushing so fast, it would be almost impossible for anybody to get through. So they're given this border or this barrier that becomes a crossing, and that's what God does. He takes our barriers and he makes them into a place of crossing, yeah? So imagine, imagine that moment when God says you're going to cross there. Joshua could have decided in his own strength, I've got a lot of people behind me. Let's just try and figure out a way to get across there. Maybe if we string a line, we, we can hook people across, maybe make some sort of a bridge, whatever it was. He didn't do that. Now, remembering everybody thought Moses was going to be the one to lead them into the promised land, and yet here it was, Joshua getting to lead them into the promised land, but he waited on God for his prosperity and for his vision, and God stops the water like walls. Can you imagine? The tides were running so fast, so fast that, in fact, in um, many years later, in 1854, a, an expert swimmer tried to swim across the Jordan and could not because the currents were so strong that they were swept away. They could not make the three-kilometre swim. So these great walls of water that stopped as soon as the priests walked in to the river with the Ark of the Covenant, the movement is led by the presence of God. The movement is led by the presence of God. So once they are there, 
the water has stopped, then it's an estimate. The Bible, it's maybe about 600,000, but estimates between to up to millions of people crossed. Now, it probably takes me maybe a casual 30 minutes to walk 3Ks. So imagine if the first person out of 3 million walked across and then by the time the last person out of 3 million walked across, that's, a, that's probably quite a long time. And God was just holding those walls effortlessly so that those people could cross. Now, in the middle is the Ark of the Covenant and nobody's allowed to get too close to it. So there's got to be a space in between. So it's still a significant amount of time that those priests are there hosting the presence of God and the presence of God is creating those walls to make what was a barrier a crossing. Hallelujah. Imagine, can you imagine the thrashing and the sound of the water? Would you be terrified to walk through seeing it, knowing that it could just collapse at any minute? We've got to live by faith, don't we? We've got to live by faith. Jesus was baptised in this very same water. Now here we have this typology coming into play. Romans 6, 4 says that we too are buried with Christ in order that just as he was raised from the dead and glorified by the Father, that we too may have new life. So just like Jesus experienced that new life and crossing that boundary into having a complete new spiritual life, just as Joshua and the Israelites did. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Jesus' baptism coming up, but hold all these things in your head. It comes together like a beautiful puzzle. God is just so incredible. So once we have that new life, we step into the righteousness of Christ because Christ puts us on. We don't put him on. He puts us on. He's bigger than we are. I've got to move. My foot's just gone numb. I'm actually sitting on my knees. You needed to know that. Okay. All right. So we've got the crossing of the Jordan River. We've got the righteousness of new life and God putting us on. So for those of you online right now, I'm showing everybody a black glove. So here we are. It looks like a black glove. Imagine Imagine this black glove is a person. What is the most important part about this person? You see their flavour, you see their colour, you see their texture, you see their character, but the movement inside that person comes from the spirit of God. The life inside that person comes from the spirit of God. Now, maybe you don't look like a black glove. I like to call this glove Adrian, Lance's wife, if you're there, this is my Adrian glove. Maybe you're a bit more stripy and colourful. Maybe God peeks through. Maybe people can see God a little bit more when they see you. But still, while this flavours what you might see of God, God is the spirit that moves us, that compels us, that gives us prosperity. Now, I'm going to show you what my glove looks like. Some people might start laughing if you're new, but if you know me, you're going to know this is very true. This is what my love looks like. I'm a little bit feisty. Sometimes I'm a little bit feisty. God's teaching me how to be feisty in the right way, but I'm also a fighter. I, you know, I get knocked down, but I get up again. I am feisty. So while you may see this, what moves me? I don't get back up again because I'm so tough. I'm a fighter because God put that spirit inside me. He put that warrior spirit inside me to move me and to compel me forward. So while we see different flavours, we've got to remember that it is God that brings the movement and the prosperity. Now, what if your glove looks like this? What? Do you know what? There's Christians that look like that. In fact, I know a few. In fact, sometimes I look plenty like that. What's inside? The same. The same spirit. We've got to know that when you are brought to new life, no matter what it looks like on the outside, no matter 
what you think you might know about someone. It is God that will bring the movement and the prosperity for them. He will be the one that compels us. He will be the one that helps us to prosper and to move forward because he will make even that goop, even that goopy person, he can make them something new because you know what new life looks like? It looks like complete spiritual transformation. So once when we were goo, one day people will see us like this. One day when we keep transforming into his likeness, when they see us, they see the character and the beauty and the prosperity of God. And that's what we're moving forward mightily towards. God didn't want me to bring you a message on what it looks like to to be living right now. I love to address current issues. I really do. But God said, no, I need you to speak into the future. I need you to be a prophetic people who see where I'm moving and what I'm doing and head towards that. I need you to see the crossing and not the boundary. I need you to know that you are made to be a people of prosperity in all areas of your life, in all areas of your life. So choose to forge ahead because you do have a choice. I mean, you can stay looking like goo for the rest of your life if you want. Last week I was preaching at Maui Church and um, I also led worship. Now, the first time I led worship was ages ago and I'm accustomed to being on stage. Those things don't bother me, but I don't really get my guitar out very much. And for those of you that made it to the Christmas Eve service, thanks for coming. It was I only expected a couple of people. It was really nice to have you there. Um, that was actually the first time I led worship with my guitar because I just don't do that publicly. You know why? Because I'm a chicken. Sometimes I'm, I'm a fighter, sometimes I'm a chicken. And I've always had people around me that would help me out, particularly my brother. I would always say, could you just come and play for me right now? Anyway, he got sick of that over the years. And because um, do you know what? It just doesn't matter. If I make a mistake, I make mistakes every time, every single time I do something. Anybody that's ever tried me see to edit a document will know I'm like, I'm an absolute cracker at that sort of um. But, you know, personally I make mistakes, professionally I make mistakes, musically I make mistakes, preaching I make mistakes. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm obedient to God and I'm obedient to the fact that I believe he's given me spiritual transformation and that I'm relying on him. When I led worship on Christmas Eve, I was going to start by apologising to everybody who was there because I knew that there would be some fluff-ups and, and it would be average. And so um, while I was thinking about that, God said, don't, don't you dare apologise for stepping out and worshipping me. Don't you dare. And I was like, okay. We've just got to be obedient and stay close to Jesus and he will bring the prosperity. Now, I believe it wasn't too bad. I didn't mind it too much and nobody seemed to be holding their head and their ears and going, stop, Beck, stop. So I'm going to call it a win. And I did it again at Maui. And did I make mistakes? Yes, a couple. Was it okay? Yeah, it was okay. So I just want to encourage you guys, no matter what it looks like, no matter what maybe other people think they see in you, you have been given new life in Christ for complete spiritual transformation, which means that you get to move forward mightily. You've got to be brave. You do have to be brave. You know, you've got to put down the chicken suit sometimes and just get up those gloves and, and go for it. All right. Do you notice that the priests were the first one to step into the Jordan? It wasn't Joshua that said, hey, hey, get out of the way. It was like the priests took the Ark of the Covenant in. And I just want to remind you that today we are the priests. There was only a certain people that could go into the presence of God. Then Jesus became our high priest. Now we are a royal priesthood. So we get to carry that presence of God so that when we move, people see the prosperity of God. People see the complete spiritual transformation. Because even when they got across the Jordan, they actually had to go into battle. They got a night off. 
And then they had the Battle of Jericho. So when you step into the promised land, there might still be battles ahead. But again, Joshua listened to God. And what did God say? God said, can you just walk around the walls of Jericho seven times with the Ark of the Covenant? And then when you've done that, blow the horn and we'll be ready for battle. I don't know, being a fighter, I would want to make some sort of different effort. I would want to be a bit more intimidating than just walking around the walls doing nothing. God knew once that horn was blown, those walls came down. God will make every boundary, every barrier a crossing for you. If you move with him. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. I'm going to wrap it up in a second. You won't have to listen to me too much longer. And for those of you that were online, I had different kind of gloves and then I had slime on my hand in the end. You missed it. Catch it again at a later date. You probably can't, but too bad. Okay. All right. You've got to know who you are. You've got to... You've got to accept who you are. Jesus accepted you exactly how you were. Now, it doesn't mean that your character can't grow and transform as well, but do you know what? You've got a personality that God gave you, which means that you actually have an opportunity to do things that nobody else does. And it's going to look different for every one of us. And loving each other in the midst of that is really tricky, but don't look in the mirror and think, this is all I've got. You've got things you don't even know you've got. And even if you know you've got it, trust God for it because it still looks like this sometimes. You've got to trust God for it. This is a faith journey. This isn't a journey of seeing everything. It's a journey of speaking things. It's a journey of moving forward mightily. It's a journey of believing God for that because that's what he's promised. So I just want to encourage you, take hold of what you've got. Love the glove that you are. Love the glove. I didn't really plan that, but it's okay. Guys, you're so special. You're so unique. You're so beautiful. And God's plan is for you is not to just be treading water all the time. It's not to swim across the Jordan at high tide and think you're going to make it on your own. God wants to do this. He wants to stop the chaos and get you in the presence so that you can move mightily. So I want to encourage you for this year, don't look back. Let's stop talking about the last two years. Let's look forward. And even if you've got to go into ISO, whatever it is, you get sick, let's remember we are people of prosperity. We are people brought to new life, completely transformed for prosperity to move forward mightily. We can trust God for that. I'm going to finish in prayer. Oh, Lord, thanks that this worked out. Thanks that I was able to talk to everybody and that you give a message that should be encouraging and uplifting to everybody. Lord, I pray that everybody hears your heart in this and that nobody moves away from you, that nobody transgresses, Lord God, that you hold us close and that we hold you close and that we rejoice in the righteousness and the fulfilment of law that is Jesus. Thank you, God, that you are opening up boundaries to make them crossings. Thank you, God, that prosperity is in your hand and you would put that hand inside us and we move forward towards it, trusting you in faith that you have all things planned and that they're good and that abundance is possible. Thank you, God. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm going to turn off now and Shane will close the service. And I love you guys and I'll see you again real soon. Bye. Well done. Thanks, Beck. Through our marvellous um, communications of electronics. <laughs> Who knows that we can do things like that. Beck is over in Yarragon and we're here in Warrigal and she's in the room with us. So... Fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. So if you'd like prayer or anything, just come up the front and our leadership team will pray with you. Other than that, our coffee's going at the back. Stay for some fellowship. Say hi to each other. Find out who everyone's going. 
And yeah, we'll be back next week. And remember, if you need anything from the leadership team, just give them a call and we're there to help. Okay, thank you very much.